Okay, let's get started. Let's do a walkthrough of the CEO roadmap. Here it is in uh, its complete form, and we're going to break it down and walk through the individual components. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that the nature of the job and, and what this uh, roadmap is illustrating is there are a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things to keep track of in a very fluid environment. And it really is a, th a land of a thousand masters. It starts with customers. It ends with the board of directors and investors and the company and the employees and, and the folks you're leading are, are in between. And let's um, start with the board of directors. There's really two groups to contend with in the board. There's the outside directors uh, who are invited probably by you or the founders to help the company. And there are investor directors who represent the interests of uh, investors. And investor directors are either investing themselves or are investing the money of a venture fund, which has a set of limited partners uh, that put money into the venture fund. And the interest there is investment return. So there's already, just with the board of directors, uh, a group of people there with varying interests. Obviously, the outside directors uh, don't worry about the investment return quite as much as the uh, venture partners you may have in the deal. Let's um, take a look at the dynamic here. So the investment return is really created by the success of the company. Um, as the CEO, you're really worried about the investment thesis and delivering on the initial business plan of the company that got sold, whether it's by you or the founders, or maybe you were the CEO founder and you've sold um, the prospects of the company to investors who have invested based on this investment thesis. And so uh, your job's very focused on delivering the investment thesis. The overall total investment return is really going to come from the success of the company, which is not necessarily directly related to um, the uh, personal performance you have with the board, but the company is really a proxy for what you're going to be delivering uh, to the board. And then as far as the moving parts go, really all these stakeholders on the side of the board of directors are something that the CEO has to pay attention to, uh, not only in delivering results, but also managing conflict questions and bringing along uh, and and building confidence in on an ongoing basis, and you will run into some problems on, along the way, and that's where that uh, communication and uh, relationship uh, becomes essential. On the other side of the equation are the customers, and there could be ten customers, a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, millions if you're in the web business, and they certainly do have an influence on the company. The viability of the company depends on having paying customers that are very interested in, in your product. And uh, if you're selling subscriptions or you want return repeat business and that's what your business plan is built on, that long-term viability of the company is definitely built on the customer relationship and the customer satisfaction. As the CEO, the metric you're going to use is the market share metric and that tracks back to what you're getting measured by. It's a quantitative way of measuring the success of the progress you're making with customers particularly against the competition. So let's take a look a little more closely at what's inside the customer company and CEO circles. Um, and notice now that the CEO and company circles are not fully overlapped. That's because the company, as you build it, has to become very self-sufficient in its mission and vision and really internalize the mission of the business long term. And it should function in generating this success uh, without the CEO's direct day-to-day, minute-by-minute, hour-by-hour involvement. Involvement. So in the company are resources and talent, which are people-focused, and implementation, which is management-focused. The customers generate cash flow, they generate referenceability, and they influence the product roadmap. And those are the really the three key points to pay attention to in, in managing the customers at the CEO level. Obviously, there's a lot more details below this, but if you manage on those three points, um, you're looking at the key factors of success for the customer relationship and building co company viability. And the CEO, of course, uh, these circles are non-overlap because the CEO has to take a step back. And whether you're the CEO or a founder running a small group, it's the same sort of thing. You've got to have some perspective on the business that's not directly linked to being influenced by day-to-day -day in the company. Uh, 
management and resolution of conflict across this roadmap is crucial, especially with the board of directors, and balancing all the goals of the stakeholders, because they will vary across the roadmap. The board of directors' goals may be different from the customer's goals. The employees start developing their own desires and goals with respect to career advancement and expectations around the company. And all of this has to be kept in balance by the CEO. And that really is what you're going to spend a lot of your time thinking about. But it's very important to think about this uh, more independently of the day-to-day -day pressures of this type of company. And that really is the viability point for this, the task of being the CEO leader in the company. So here's a summary, some things to remember. Avoid getting distracted from the roadmap. It's very easy to do in an early stage company because the other big part of the job of the CEO is as an employee and, and generally adding a lot to the equation in terms of deliverables on a day-to-day -day basis. But you have to take a step back. So um, don't get distracted from looking at the roadmap. And it's a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly focus. I like to look at the roadmap every Monday and ask myself if I've got all the moving parts taken into consideration, if there are conflicts or issues developing in any of the areas. And that defines my uh, priority list for, for that week of, of what I need to do in managing this equation. And then third, practice the four key CEO success factors. And I have a separate presentation that goes into this in detail, but I thought I'd mention them here because they are really the context uh, with which you want to drive the CEO roadmap and the company forward. One is concentrate on valuation performance. That's crucial if you have investors. And uh, even if you don't, uh, the reason you started the company was to have a valuable asset, focus on valuation. Fo second, focus on the congruency of goals and objectives. Make sure everyone in the equation is lined up. And this really is uh, a course correction type of process um, over time. And that's a very important practice to have as a leader. Third, use persuasiveness. And I can't overemphasize this one because the the old idea of command and control, and especially in high tech companies, but pretty much in in all progressive companies these days, is kind of gone out the window. It's it, you're you're really selling your point of view to everyone and bringing them along, and this is especially important with the board. And then fourth, maintain adequate transparency. And I want to emphasize the word adequate. Um, I don't think it's necessary to be transparent on every single thing. You want to be able to show the board investors and your employees and your customers that you as the leader of the company are uh, in control of what you're doing, the uh, direction you're taking, and the way you're solving problems. But it's also important with a board uh, and investors as you go through the board management process to keep in mind that they do expect you to run into some issues and they expect you to run into some issues at the company that you as an individual might need help solving or there are situations that come up that you might need help solving and it's really essential to bring the board members of the board as a whole uh, into play on this if it's if it's a financial or capitalization issue bring the investors into play on it as well